wild horses. The irrigation is laid out here, just outside of Yarrington, Nevada. It's late winter, early spring. Look at that ice on there. I have a habit of checking to make sure law enforcement's okay, and I see there's a Lyon County Sheriff's Patrol car He's got a flat tire. Wait, he's got another one. Got another flat tire. Got a headlight out right there. Looks like maybe somebody shot it out. Oh, he's got another flat tire. You know what, I think all these are flat tires. You know, I think that just might be a dummy car. Yeah. It's just trying to slow people down. Doing some spring plowing. Coming up on Buckland Station in Lyon County, Nevada, there's a little campground in amongst these cottonwoods and the little creek it goes into Lake Lahontan comes through here. Called the Carson River Little Creek. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> There it is. So Kelly was saying this is a really fun place to pull in. If you're traveling through, they have a little garden and a little spot you can walk around during the summertime and you can get to, so they've got a little restroom here. So you can use those picnic tables and have your coffee there, or your lunch. This is the old Buckland Station. You can see the mud walls, the mud bricks. Here's the back of it. So Buckland Station was uh, named for Samuel and Eliza Buckland, and they came out from Ohio in 1826. It's right by the highway, so you do get a little 
traffic noise in the front by the main building and get a better look at it from here. Hello everybody, I've had the good fortune today to run into Kristen Sanderson. She's a native born and raised in Nevada and she works for the Nevada State Parks and she's going to tell us a little bit about Buckland Station. Good morning and welcome to Buckland Station. The house is 154 years old this year. It was built in 1870 by Samuel, Samuel and Eliza Buckland and it was built using materials they salvaged from nearby by Fort Churchill after its abandonment. And the Buckland family, they were one of the earliest documented and largest landowning families in this area. What, what occurred at Fort nearby Fort Churchill for people not familiar with the area? Sure, so Fort Churchill was established in 1860 as a result of the Pyramid Lake War, which was a series of two battles fought between the Northern Paiute Indians and joint U.S. Army and local militia forces. And immediately after those battles were fought, near Pyramid Lake, they established Fort Churchill and its primary purpose was to provide protection. They were protecting the infrastructure in the area, the transportation and communication corridors, which would have included the California Trail, the Pony Express, and the Telegraph. Samuel was an enterprising man and many people are surprised to learn that he actually built the area's first and only toll bridge here across the Carson River. Interesting. So that was back in the horse and buggy days? It was, yes, right about the time of the Pony Express and uh, right. the River Trails. Right, so even today there's quite a bit of traffic going by. It's a there big is. route. There is, so imagine 160 years ago, all of this vehicle traffic would have been replaced by wagons. Right, so what was the home? Did they ever rent out? This is a large, large home. Did they ever rent out to boarders or travelers? They did. It was a boarding house, trading post, and it became the heart of the community that grew up here. The Bucklands would host weddings, funerals, dances. They had a second story ballroom. That's amazing. And they it's like a commu the community house. center. It was the community center. What so, do we have here? This is one of my favorite pieces of furniture in the house. The piano was donated in 2017, but it actually lived here at Buckland Station in the early 1900s. Who are these, who are these people under the photograph? So that was the family who lived here at the time. Oh, it was look, the there's Toll pictures family. of the family here too. Even. It was Alonzo Toll and his wife and two daughters. And uh -huh. his daughter, Alice, she would go on to serve as the second woman in Nevada state legislature oh, okay. in the 1920s. Now, and which she, which picture is she of these? It is the third from the left. So Kristen was nice enough to uh, go ahead and let us see the upper floor. It's not normally open. There's some construction and restoration going on up there, but we're gonna go up there and take a look. And this allows you to see some of the original materials as they came over from Fort Churchill. So here's the view of the nice garden. Of course, Kristen said that she loves to put the garden in every year. I'll bet that's beautiful. We'll have to come back later in the summer and take a look. So Kristen said it's not a very peaceful place today in the highway. All the trucks and traffic are zooming by, but it's still really interesting and scenic and such a fantastic view from that porch. Well, thank you so much for the private tour. Oh, thanks for coming in today. It was wonderful being able to share the history with you. Yes, we'll have to become, we'll have to come back for sure. We're on the outskirts of Reno by Sparks. This is on the east end of town. Heading on Interstate 80, heading west. There's the Grand Sierra to the left in the distance. And there's the Nugget straight ahead. Interesting how the highway and the train tracks just basically go right through Reno. Wow. That guy almost clipped you. Yeah, I came close. Yeah, you know, I have experienced some road rage the last time I was out here too. It's, it's, a, it's like a different tempo, you know? Yeah, it's a People are in a big huff.
impressive front entrance. I like the staff here. They're uh, they're very courteous and helpful, you know. And I haven't experienced any hard sell, anything anything like that. I uh, had had good luck with this with the store here. Well, everybody, we're just decided to eat our lunch in the parking lot of Cabela's over here in Boomtown because it is a blowing out there. It's cold and blustery and everything. You can see our spread here. It's got lots of cookies and stuff and it's really good. But we decided just to stay in the car because it's way past lunch. Yeah. So. Downtown Reno, Virginia Street area. Arrows, El Dorado, Calneva, Circus Circus, all those. In there. That's where we went to the truck show last spring. Washoe Valley and that is Washoe Lake and that is just north of Carson City the state capital of Nevada up the hill from Carson City into the Sierra and as you can see there's some snow on the side of the highway and US 50 and we'll be up by Spooner Lake and the Spooner Summit shortly Spooner Summit elevation 7146 we're on US 50 heading west, it's wide open. I think the weather's up nicer up here in the mountains than it was down in the oh, valley. It was windy. Yeah, it was windy down in the valley. This might be a good thing. Here's Spooner Lake right up here. Oh good, it's plowed. Look at that pile of snow. Uh-huh. Glad they plowed this so we can get into the park. Yes. Doesn't look it's like there's any Nevada fee. State. Is there any fee today? We got Nevada plates. What does it say? Entrance fee. Well, it's just 10 bucks, but that's for a fee station pay here. Spooner Lake is a Nevada State Park, so it's $10 for Nevada residents and $15 for others, such as California. But we figured that someone's got to pay to plow this road to get in here, so we're not going to complain. Yeah. Well, there's some people here. I've got the road plowed. That's nice. Piles and piles of snow. Probably everyone was wondering how much snow we got from that last storm. Well, here's what's left of it up by Spooner Lake. It's pretty steep behind me, so I'm going to go along this ridge.
there's beautiful Spooner Lake. It's got ice under that snow, but we're not sure how thick it is. So we're not gonna chance going out across it. However, it's not too deep here where we're at as indicated by these pine trees. Beautiful Spooner Lake. Kelly, I think we're the only people out here on the lake again, right? Yeah, Seems like every time, every time we go out this winter, we're like the only people out. Mm -hmm. Kind of nice. We have Spooner Lake all to ourselves. We're not greedy or selfish. We're just telling you how it is. It's beautiful. Glad you could come along with us. Look at that sun peeking through the clouds. You know what the reason is why there's nobody out here? Why? Is because it's the end of the weekend and we live so close, we can wait to go home until really, really late. And those people that are going back to Sacramento or San Francisco, they've had to leave already. That's true. That does make a difference. So beautiful and crisp. There's a little bit of a breeze, but it's crisp and invigorating. And doing this exercise, if you've never done snowshoeing before, it's, it can be kind of sweaty and strenuous a little bit. So you kind of want it to be cold with a little breeze. Isn't that pretty? This is not that far away from when I used to live in Glenbrook. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look on the map to see exactly how close it is. It's close. Yeah. You were at the old high school, weren't you, pretty recently in Glenbrook? Recently, yeah, in Zephyr, Zephyr Cove, Nevada. Yeah. Beautiful.
everybody that was a beautiful hike for today. We really had fun snowshoeing up here at Smooter Lake.